So next we are going to talk about the p value. Now this this should be pretty common if you listen or read some statistics um, articles. You're gonna see that notorious p value everywhere. It's the letter p. So what is the p value here? So let's get to the concept of the p values. So suppose that we set up the now hypothesis that h zero h now that mu is at least a thousand. So we believe that the average is at least a thousand. Right. We may, that that may be true or false. Right. Yes, we don't we can we can we can say for sure. Right. So we have to do something like to test whether our assumption, our hypothesis was correct. So what we do here is of course we can get we have to get a random sample okay, of, of a size. And we can manage, let's say 30, the, the, the standard number. So let's say that sample of size 30, like, give us the mean of 999. We believe that the average is at least a thousand, but from one sample, from one result, the number turns out to be 999. Right? And of course, this goes against the hypothesis, our hypothesis in the first place. Right? We think it's at least a thousand. But it's what this says it is 999. The, the question is can we just reject that on the spot? Like, can we just say oh that, that means it's it's not a, a thousand anymore. We were wrong. We have to change the new. Right? And the answer is no. Right? Because why let's take a look at let's take a look at the the normal curve here, like our favorite curve, maybe not for you, I don't know. Let's just take a look at the normal curve here. If we believe that the average, like the mu, the population mean, is that value, right, then if we perform some samples, right, those samples, the, the sample mean or x bar, like, could fall into any of these values. It could be exactly that, it could be less than that, it could be more than that. Right? There are all sorts of values it can take on. Right? That means it, even if we believe it is a thousand, then it is it's still possible to get a, a number of 999. Right? That's, that's still possible. <clears throat> right. If we do we, if we repeat that and we get 995. Right. And of course that it's still possible. If we repeat and then we get a thousand and two and that's possible. Right. Maybe we repeat any how many how many times we want to. But all these things are still possible. Okay. So the question is if anything is possible, what do we do here? Right. If anything is possible then what is meaningful, what is life? In the first place, right? So even if they are all possible, then some values are more likely than the other. Okay. If you just look at the bell curve, right, we know all these all these values are possible, right? But but these values should be more likely. Uh, it is more likely to get a value between these two values instead. Let's say. 998 to 1002. Okay. Most of the time, the, the, the value, the sample mean, should fall into this range between 998 and 1002. <coughs> right? So, these, two, these values are more likely than, than say, 995. Right? Because that, that looks like too far away to do the depth. Uh, again, that's that's more like more likely than a thousand and ten, because that's too far to the left, right? So we then we have to have like just just like the image, kind of like says we have to have the a range here, right? That should be more likely candidates for the sample mean. Right? So even if these are possible, right, then 
we should be able to say that but if if you think ninety nine is possible, right? You should be able to say that maybe nine ninety seven is less likely. Okay, for that seems too far, and then we have to be able to say that nine ten is like almost impossible. At least we should, we should have some idea about this tier values, but right? Ninety nine is close, so it's pretty likely, so it's possible. And it is ninety ninety seven is a little bit too far, so it's less likely than the ninety nine, right? And nine ten should be like almost impossible. So our goal is to give the 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 colors to these numbers. I right? just says what just as what I am doing there. Right? There should be some area that should be possible. Right, maybe that area, like that some areas, kind of like less likely but still possible. But anything beyond that, beyond those those two sides, are almost impossible. So, in these cases, we should be able to reject that on the spot. Right, because nine hundred and ten is too far away, and we should say, oh, that's silly, that's not possible. Right. For other values, then. Like this one, like we should be say it's possible, so we do not reject. So if, even though it is less than a thousand, we still believe that our hypothesis, our now hypothesis, is still true. Then for ninety-seven, now this is the the kind of like the gray area. Like we have to, it's up to us to decide whether. We want to reject or not reject, okay. and in order to be able to to to, to draw like an area for that number, okay, we have to have something some value here alpha that we are going to see in a, in a moment. This is called the confidence level, or you can think of like moving this this two this two bars like to the left or right. We have to decide whether we want to put this two bar far away or close to the actual center. Yeah. And that's right where the p value comes in. Okay. Our previous question is this question <coughs> doesn't give us enough information. Okay. If from that evidence itself, we, we, we cannot say for sure if we should reject or not. So we have to kind of refresh the question. So suppose that the mean is a thousand. So in 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 other words, we, we have this image of the bell curve. Like suppose that is mu is a thousand. So we want we want to find a probability that the sample mean is at most nine nine hundred and ninety nine. Right. In this case, the, the answer can be the, the, the question can be answered with a single number, a single number that can we can compute as the probability or as the area. Right. If we ask if it's likely or not, then it's kind of unclear. Like it it's up to us to decide. But we can ask, okay, what is the probability that the number is less than or equals to nine hundred and ninety nine? Right. So now we are. Asking for the area. <coughs> Which now we can compute. Right. <coughs> and from that number, from that single number, maybe we get I don't know, point one, point five, point two. Now we can we can transform we can transfer that number to something that we can decide. In the previous example, we 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 only kind of like judge by feeling. Like we think this number is close. This number is not close. This number is too far, right? But how do we decide if it's close enough? Again, the answer is we have to get a single number. Like we get we have to get something that we can look and compare, and then eventually I like, make a decision on based on that, right? So here here they are. So we now have a different question, right? From the population mean of a thousand, 
what? How likely? Or what is the probability that? The sample means would fall below 999. Yeah, that's gonna give us a single number. And from that single number, then we can make some meaningful decision. Right. So now we are going to, to, to the definition of the p-value. Right. This is um sorry about what it takes, right? But the p-value here is just this area. Uh, it is exactly the area. Given the population mean and sample mean, p value is the area under the curve. <coughs> that is, and uh, that's another keyword here. That is equally or more unfavorable. So it should be like against. <coughs> against the hypothesis. What it means, it means if, if the hypothesis here, if, if our now hypothesis is that the mu is at least a thousand, right? this is what our now hypothesis is saying. Okay. We have an idea that it should be at least a thousand. Then the p-value is the, the area below the curve. That is against, which means it is on the other side. So that's why we have the curve here to the left. We think it is, it is greater. We think it is greater. So the p value looks at the area, the chance that it is against, so it is smaller than the value. Right. And we are going to verify exactly how to compute it, but that's, that's, that's the, the basic concept here. We have the area for the population mean, and we have the p-value for the area that is against that belief, that now hypothesis. So, we, uh, we are going to compute that, but just, just give, give a quick glance on how to compute it. Right. <clears throat> so this is what we, actually we have already seen that from two weeks ago, I think, on how to compute it. So if you, if for the C test, like if we, if, if we know that our distribution follows the standard samples here, then we can use the standard normal, the, the normal distribution curve like to compute. And that is how you transform from the The sample we have right, to the normal standard to the standard normal distribution and find the curve here. If we know right that we have to use a t test because we don't we don't know the uh, population um, variance or if we, we don't have we have a small sample size then we have to use a t test that's gonna be a, a different curve. Right, but you can use the applet or whatever to compute the area. If you if you if you know that is a proportion, okay, that's still the same standard definition curves, but just with different variance and different values to put in here. Right, or if you believe it, it's a chi square. Now that's a different curve which we will learn in the last lecture for this course. Right, we can use that curve. Maybe we can use that formula. To, to, to transform that into this curve and then from that curve then we can get the the area the number right. so that's the idea yeah. but we have to be able to determine uh, oops. Oops. Hmm. oh there are my yeah, we have to be able to to know what curve we use, right? And use the right curve to get to the right number. But just for the to, to understand the concept of p-value, we are going to use this, this, and, and maybe this one, and right, the first two curves because they are similar enough. Right, we can, we're just gonna repeat that. Right? But if you happen to have to work on different tests, then you can just simply look at the formula here, there. 
right? And apply the same concept here. You find the area to the right of some point, right? And use that area to make a decision on something. Right, so for example, if you look, if you think about the mu, right, the population mean, you know that's by the law of large number mu. Mu is gonna follow the normal distribution, and that means we have we can use the statistic on the first column, there, there, right, and from this value is like if sigma is five and this mu is a thousand, if n is a hundred, then we can transform that into this z. Right? And, then, and then we use this z instead to compute the, to find the p value. So just a, a, a step to transform the distribution of our problem into the distribution that we can com compute easily. So the way to compute the p value, right? Again, you 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 can memorize this, or you can just look, uh, start with the curve, right? With the mu here, and then the p value is gonna be the area to the left of this point, and this point is the sample. Wait, oh, it's only it's not mu. It is point mu zero that we believe. And then we have that point x x bar right, from the our average. So we believe this is what we believe. Like we believe of h now that it is at least that amount. Right. <coughs> then the p value is the evidence against that. So it's the area in the other in the opposite direction. On this case, a green direction. Right. And to compute that green area, then if you have to again uh, um, apply the basic concept of finding the area of the normal distribution, but that, that thing is exactly that formula. If you want to use that formula, then that, uh, that's a like one line formula to compute the p value. Okay. But if, if you understand the concept, then you can look at the concept and transform that into the formula below or uh, actually here. Right. So, if you start with the hypothesis that the mu, the average, is at least some value, mu zero, then the p value right, is the area to the other side, in this case, the, to the left, of the sample. Right. We are trying to compute how likely it is that a uh, random sample we give at, mo at most that value. So, for the, for the previous example, we, if we believe that the, the average is a thousand, then we are asking how likely that a uh, random sample we get we give a value of 999. In other words, we want to find the area to the left of that point. Okay. So oh, that, that, that's gonna be this image. Right? This, 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 this is the, the main concept here. Right? If 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 we believe that this is at least a thousand. Right, and the result is maybe let's say a thousand and two. That means the the result agrees with our original hypothesis. Right, so that means we do we we do something. We do not reject. Right, because it it already agrees, and that's another thing we have to do. Right. But if x is slightly below, let's say it's nine hundred and ninety nine. This number, oh, is it a thousand? Right. That's gonna, gonna fall here. Right. It's, it's to, the, to the left. So we are saying that even if it doesn't agree, but is it still possible? Right. There's some chance that the, the number will be a little, a, little, a little bit below that. But here, right, if let's say x is x bar, the sample mean. Is nine hundred and ninety-five, right? Then we, we should be able we, we have to be able to decide that okay that is not possible, right? If the actual number is a thousand, then it should be close to impossible to get an one hundred and ninety-five, right? That means 
what we say here is we reject the now hypothesis, right? You claim that it's a thousand, but from my evidence, from a single sample, it is 995. So I believe right, I have a strong evidence. I am pretty confident that a thousand is too high. Right? If it if it's too high, then that means I reject it. If I reject it, that means I believe that the mu. If I if I re reject the now hypothesis, that means I believe the opposite. I believe that the mean is at most ten a, a thousand. I believe in the opposite of that statement. Right. So for this image, we're gonna have um three areas, or actually two. Like it depends on how you view. But let's say three here. Right. This area agrees with the hypothesis, so we don't have to do anything. Right. That area doesn't agree, but it's still possible. So we still, in these two cases, we still believe. So we do not reject. Right. These two areas are still likely. And we have the, the third one, the third area, that we reject. I think here I, I write too many reject, right? The reject here and there and there. So, in your head, if, if you have like a simple version of this, then it should be something like that. Oops. Right. We do not reject or we reject, right? And our decision is kind of based on this curve, on how the curve we look, right? And how much. How confident we have to be? Right? We can. This this area right, is a p value. We are going to reject if the area is too low. Right? If if the chance is too low, then we reject the original now hypothesis. <coughs> so oh, that's not right. So the, the the actual position is you can you just write you, you just um draw this curve I right, put in all the values compute the area and see if it's likely or not okay so let's search um that's one that's the first example here the computational example okay so we have all these numbers right we, we have a thousand which is what we have here. Since suppose we know that the sigma is five, five is kind of large, and we take a sample size of a hundred, and get the sample mean of nine hundred and ninety-nine. The and the question is compute a p value. Uh, in other words, com um explain how likely it is to get this number, nine hundred and ninety-nine. Okay, so. We have this curve, right? That's a normal distribution with mean a thousand and standard deviation five over square root a hundred square. So if if we plot that graph, right? We're gonna get this cur the curve where the center is a thousand. So the question is, if we put, if we look at this point, right, nine hundred and ninety nine, we want to find Compute the area, compute the p value. So we can just use the formula here. That's x, x bar minus uh, mu zero divided by sigma divided by square root of n. Okay, that, that, that's the formula for the area that you can use from, you, you can get from um, memorizing. Or from transforming from that into the standard normal distribution of n zero and one. But anyway, that is going to give us um, p of z less than what is it? X bar. X bar is the sample mean. It is nine hundred and ninety nine minus the actual mean that we believe it to be a thousand. And divided by this number nine 
over square root 100. This gives us a nice number of minus 2. And from that, we can use the C table to get the, the actual value of 0 0.0228. 0 0.0. Two to eight. That means what it means. It means that that is the, the p value. Like if you put in put that in Google Form or whatever, Chris, and you get a, a full point. But what it means is there is a. We are saying that there is two point two eight percent chance like that. a uh, random sample will be 999 or smaller we get the p value the value is uh, the number between 0 and 1 and more, usually very small and from that we we conclude right as um, a word that people or such people can understand okay. that means we, we that there is like only 2% chance that a random Sample we give an average of 999. Okay. So here we already get the number. We, we, we don't we uh we haven't decided yet what we have to do with that number. But now we have a number. And from that number then we can talk about other stuff. Okay, so that number is gonna be significant. So let's uh, look at a different <coughs> problem. Like right, that again wall text. But if, if I have enough time, oh yeah, sure. So now that's a wall text here. So let's cover a story. So, so, so a baker claims that his bread height is more than 50 centimeter. When you, when you think about height, that's kind of like weird, right? But in this case, I believe they talk about like the French bread that's kind of long. Okay, anyway, this, this, this guy, this baker here, claims that it is at least 15 centimeters. Okay. And of course, some, some people might not believe him. Okay. So, you, you have to kind of like test whether he's right or not. So, you have to perform a test. But we don't perform a test yet, we only get the p value first. Okay. So, what do, what, what do we do here before we can perform a test? We have to first get a sample, right? And how do we get a sample from of bread? So we just bake them, right? So he bakes 10, 10 breads, right? And then he measure the average of those breads. So let's say the average is fourteen. Forty is smaller, a little, a little bit smaller. And somehow we know from he knows from hundreds of loaves of bread that he has made in his entire life that's the standard deviation is 0 0.5 okay. and the, the question is compute the p-value so let's have kind of like story behind that but what we, have, what we wanted to see here is we have to compute the p-value so before we get to the number let's look over at our curve there okay, so what do we have here we believe that the, the average is 15 okay, it's more than 15 that's what he believed so this is what he believed but from a single sample it gives number 14 okay. so that is against his belief but the question is it is likely to happen Okay, so to answer that question, we have to compute the probability that that happens. In, in, in other words, we have to compute the area or the p value. Okay. So just from that number, we can then again get some values. So we have to first get our now hypothesis here. In this case, we he believed that mu is at least fifteen, and right, he believed he is right. And from our single sample, we get 
the size of uh, the mu of fortune. Oop. And we have we know that the standard the Chan is 0.5. And so we can compute the p-value. The answer is going to be the area to the left of that of that point. But if you want the exact number, then we have to use this formula. So c is there. What is x bar? X bar is oh sorry, it's not mu. It's just a bar. It's our sample mu. It is fourteen. My next mu is 15, what he believed in the first place. Sigma is 0.5, and is 10. Oh, and is 10. That's the number of the, the sample size, or in this case, uh, the number of breaths we have back. And once we compute that, we get the number of minus um, 6.32. And then you, you put that in into the standard normal curve. If mean is zero and if sigma is one, how likely how likely that the number is on the left of this point? Right, if you put in the num in like uh, the applet that I gave you last time, you will get number zero. It it's not exactly zero, but it's small enough. Maybe something like that. It's small enough that the that they decide to write down to zero. So that means the p value is zero. In other words, if we transform that, that means p value is zero. It means there is zero percent chance right, that a sample mean is smaller than or equals to fourteen. Zero percent chance. It means there is like almost no chance. Right. If we believe that the average is fifteen, then there is no chance, almost no chance that the sample average, the sample mean, is fourteen. Right. From this statement, you can tell C that the the Baker lies, right? Oh, not not lie, but uh, the Baker's he is he was wrong. The average is not 15, it's smaller than that. It doesn't mean it's 14, like it's, it's still possible, it's like 14.5, 13.9. But the original hypothesis here like, is reject. No, we will see in the moment whether we should reject or not. But if there is like zero chance, we should reject it, right? So in this case, the p value is almost zero. Or let's just say it's zero. And then we have to understand what do we do with that value. But that's gonna be in the next um, lecture, next clip. So see you there.